Hello and welcome everybody to another Pepperstone Learn It Live webinar. This is of course our special on swing trading and technical analysis. My name's Thomas Atkinson from FX Evolution. As always, I'm joined by Tyrone Abella. Tyrone, how are you going, man? Good, hello everyone, and welcome to swing trading and technical analysis, one of our favorite subjects. Probably the second favorite behind scalping, but you know what, swing trading's got its place in our hearts. So looking forward to getting into tonight and having a look at some live examples. Yeah, so we'll be going through the live charts. Uh, there's plenty to go through here. And obviously swing trading is one of the nearest and dearest things. I think that we kind of started, you always start usually on the scalping, on the day trading side. And then sometimes you find that, you know what, swing trading might be the best suit for you. And one of the, uh, I guess, things that we're trying to go through today's session is to try to find out what is your psychology and what possibly is going to be the best trading style for you because it is specific to everybody, but it's good to have it in your arsenal. Of course, the information contained in this video or webinar is going to be generic in nature and for, for educational purposes, and the information will not take into account your personal objectives, financial situation, or needs. So always keep that in mind. So just a quick reminder, as per usual, we have the Pepperstone Telegram group, of course, one of the best groups out there to join on in. So we'll uh, post the, we'll copy and paste the link for that in the room. If you're not part of that, get on and into the Pepperstone Telegram group. Little bits of snippets of information. There's a whole bunch of new content coming out. We've got Chris uh, Weston from Pepperstone. Um, he's creating heaps and heaps of content on the daily at the moment. Uh, and that's being posted through there. So make sure you go check that out. And of course, if you want to follow uh, FX Evolution, you can follow us on YouTube. We've got a big presence there. And of course, we also have a Discord community. We'll post the link for that a little bit later. So what are we going to be covering today? Well, quite a few things. Firstly, swing trading strategies, one of the biggest things that we love to do. We'll also be taking a look at live charts and price action analysis. I think that's one of the things that Tyron and I talk about a lot. And then we'll be doing that technical analysis on MT5. And of course, if you have questions, ask them throughout today's session because if you don't ask a question believe me the question you have isn't this right Tyrone? the question that everybody has there's at least 10 to 15 other people that have the same question 100 percent. there'll be another 150 that watch the replay that want to know it so don't be afraid to ask them that's true <laughs> we do get a lot of people watching it so welcome to all the people watching it after remember put a comment in the uh youtube uh, algorithm down below it does help out pepperstone uh Absolutely. so understanding what candles are telling you ty now i put this slide in here this week because i talk about this a lot and you know i'm going to focus on it and i know the, i actually think you know tyron was instrumental into changing the way that we 100% look at candles. And that is to break everything down to statistical analysis and to think about what is each candle telling you? And when you actually understand the important candles and the rubbish candles, let's call it, you will become a better trader, whether you're a scalper, a day trader or a swing trader. So I wanna focus here on the left-hand side, just quickly tie and talk about this long leg doji. So firstly, what, what is a long leg doji telling us about the market? Most people are gonna know, but what is it telling us? Yeah, I think it's important that we do know, because a lot of people see it and say, well, it's an indecision candle, but now why is it an indecision candle? Well, it's because the price action has gone to the upper end of the range, the lower end of the range, and basically ended up where it started or very close to where it started, which is about the middle. So if you can understand it from, a, uh, from the perspective that the buyers have tried to take it all the way up, the sellers have tried to take it all the way down throughout that period. Now, it doesn't matter what that is, whether it's a daily, a weekly, or you know, it doesn't matter what it is, even a monthly. But during that period, they've tried to have a go at both ends and they've ended up in the exact same spot where it started basically, or very close to it. We always call a long-legged doji anything that has an open and a close that finishes somewhere between the 40 and 60%. Now, a, a long-legged doji is not gonna look exactly like that every single time, right? This is just not how the market works. It's not a perfect mm -hmm. mechanism, but, if it's in that range, uh, it's good enough to be called a long-legged doji because it doesn't matter what it really looks like, it's what price represents that's important. That's what you have to remember. It's what it's actually representing and what happened in that period. And what if we see this tie, and this is where the, there is a main reason why we start with this candle and these other two here today. And what, what if we see like a closure above? So let's say the next candle comes out and we see a nice big bullish candle and that candle closes above the high over here. What's that telling us about the market? I mean, that simply tells us that the decision's been made. <laughs> and, um, and and realistically, that's the other thing about these candles is that you need to understand where they are in the context of what the trend is doing. Like a, an indecision candle in the middle of nowhere doesn't really mean all that much. But an indecision candle 
at a resistance point or at a support zone or at a reload zone like a 20 moving average or something is extraordinarily important because it means mm. the market has paused there, buyers and sellers are considering where it's going to go uh, to no avail because it doesn't go anywhere. The next candle is crucial. So it really is important to understand where it is in the context of the trend and that makes it far more powerful. It's all about context of each one of these candles. As Tyron just mentioned there, any one candle, this is some of people's favourites, Ty, the Gravestone Doji or the Dragonfly Doji, also known as the Pin Bar, also known as the Shooting Star and the Hammer Candle. In their sur On the surface, what are they telling us? They're telling us full rejections in the market. The market's gone up during this period. The market has rejected during this period. Could be a one hour, could be a four hour, could be a 15 minute, could be a daily. Of course, the higher the time frame, the more significant the movement here from the perspective of the psychology of the market. But when you see these, are they that good by themselves, Ty? No, it, again, in isolation, uh, no good. But you see a shooting star or um, a gravestone mm -hmm. doji at the top of a, a trend or at you know pointing past the resistance zone, top of a channel, anything like that, all of a sudden that is worth its weight in gold. Uh, same with the dragonfly doji. Now, look, remember, names aren't important, okay? So, look, gravestone, gravestone doji, right. dragonfly doji, they're a, a shooting star and a hammer, but just a very, very aggressive form of those two candles. So, yeah, they're very, very aggressive because the open and the close are very, very close together, whereas, you know, with a hammer or with a shooting star, you've got a 20% sort of variation there. So, but they mean the same thing. The more important thing that you need to learn here is that they are actually telling you the exact same thing, that at some point on a gravestone doji, the buyers have had absolute control, tried to push it to the very, very top of the range. And by the end of the seller, has completely overwhelmed any momentum made by the buyers and it's effectively closed exactly where it started. And this is why it's really important to understand where it is in the context of a trend because that in the middle of nowhere is just a candle, but that at a resistance point or at, you know, basically the top of a channel or top of a pattern is very, very important. And that's where, you know, they, these really come into their own. I think in isolation, um, not much good. In the right place, unbelievably good. Yeah, and again, bringing it down to percentages is one of the things. This is a slide directly taken out of our course, Ty, and it's all about breaking things down to percentages. Speaking of percentages and understanding, you know, buyer and seller dynamics, we talk about price action all the time. We talk about how it's probably one of the best leads for people out there. And in essence, if we were to choose one thing over anything, we would just look at a chart, what they call a naked chart, which is basically just price and read it that way. Could we be successful that way? Absolutely, because supply and demand or buyer and seller dynamics is super important to understand. Now, this is an excerpt taken out of that. You'll notice over here, we have effectively what the long leg doji is. So neither side had control at the end of this period. Then we have, of course, something like here, the bullish hammer pin bar is known. Sellers lost, had control, but then they lost it to the buyers. Now, I know this seems simple and everybody's probably out there right now saying, Ty, you know, you guys, you're rabbiting on about this. We know. We know, we've yeah. seen these candles before, we understand, but do you truly know? Do you exactly know right. when they are at a key level? And I can tell you that I knew about these candles within one day of coming into trading, but to truly understand where they had to be, the places that I wanted to see them, the way that I wanted to trade them, the way that we wanted to make better informed decisions, took years. And that might oh, sound 100%. ridiculous and stupid, yeah. but that's how long. 100%. And these nine candles represent every single price action you're going to see in the market. Simple as that. So you understand the price sure. dynamics here. You know mm -hmm. everything that's happening in the market because there's no other candles that you're going to see. Simple as that. And yeah, when you understand these, you basically understand buyer and seller dynamic. Easier than it probably sounds, but when you put it into practice, it'll just look, it'll be second nature to you. The theory into reality, yeah, Ty. Theory into oh, reality. Yeah. So we, we always talk about, you know, in Forex trading and, and just in any any trading, whether you're trading stocks on Pepperstone, whether you're trading commodities, whether you're trading Forex, you really need to kind of start off by having some things that are your bread and butter trades. And this is the same for swing trading. There are going to be higher statistical chance types of trades versus others. Now, if you're trading uh, odd US dollar, euro US dollar, pound US dollar, those types of trades, then are they going to trade a certain way with a higher statistical likelihood? Absolutely. If you're taking something like the Turkish Lira, that that's going to be a little bit less statistically likely because there's more maybe fundamentals that overtake that market and destroy some of your swing trades. So you've got to understand it. It's the same as stocks. They call them blue chip stocks, the big 
the big ones in the S&P 500 or the Australian Stock Exchange or wherever else you are in the world, the big, big companies, they trade within ranges, they trade smaller percentages, but there may be a higher likelihood of being correct on your swing-based trade. Now, if you trade a penny stock or you trade a very small currency out there, they're going to be possibly great payoffs, but at the same time, not without their own risks. And I think once you understand that, you can really bring in the idea of what's your psychology going into this trade? Are you going to lose faith if you take two or three losses in a row? Because when you're trading a penny stock tie or a smaller currency, that can really happen, can't it? Even with one of the best oh, trading absolutely. systems in the world. Absolutely. And and really, uh, if you've got a trading system that's robust enough to be able to absorb all that, then you're going to be okay. But look, understanding, I can't begin to tell you how important understanding the instrument you're trading is. Don't jump into something you've never seen before and have a crack because mm -hmm. if you don't understand its daily movements, you're going to struggle because realistically, you have to learn that before you put the, the trade in. Now, we know on yeah. the Aussie USD, we get 100 pip move. It's a pretty good effort for a day. We'll be happy with that. Um, if it all of a sudden it went 400 pips, we'd be absolutely astounded. Can it do it? Of course it can. But on a daily basis, absolutely not. So we know what the range is. And when you know what the range is going to be, you know, roughly, you're able to take take profits and put your stop losses in places that are going to really coincide with what that daily movement's going to be. So you, know, you put a 10 or 15 pip stop loss on in the Aussie USD at a good level, you're likely to probably survive it on a daily basis. You put that on something like cable uh, or, one, or the beast, uh, you're going to be taken out probably nine times out of 10, even if it's a good location, actually put your entry point. Yeah, it's about understanding the instrument that you're trading. Also, the time of day that you want to trade it. If you're, yeah. let's say, in Australia and you want to trade when you finish work or you're in Europe and you want to trade the morning before you go to work, maybe then the European session, the London Open will be the time that you want to. What are you going to focus on? You're going to focus yeah. on the euro. You're going to focus on the pound. These are the ones that you're going to start to say, okay, well, I need to be good at these. Once you are good at these, then you additionally add more. There's nothing wrong with being an expert at just a few pairs, dialing that in and then bringing it through. You know what I mean? I had a, tra it's I had a trader contact me today and, um, hmm. and tell me that they were scalping and they, they feel that the market is trading against them. And I said, really? I said, well, how big are your stop losses? Yeah. Five pip stop losses. And, and I said, oh, my goodness, okay, what, what are you trading? You must be very sharp at your entry points. What are you trading? Mm. Uh, pound odd. Oh, in oh, London wow. Open. <laughs> wow. Like, pound odd <laughs> in London Open actually breathes. It actually inhales five pips and actually breathes it out and goes, yeah. oh, that's five pips that, up and down. That's a tick, isn't like, it? <laughs> oh, like, come on. Like, you've got to be sensible. Mm. At the end of the day, you, you really need to understand the time of day that you're trading for starters when it comes down to spreads. But when yep. you're trading such small um, yeah, stop losses, it's very, very difficult to survive, even if your entry point is good. You have to really understand the instrument that you're trading and also give it the room to breathe. Because if you don't, the market's not against you. The broker's not against you. you know, spreads aren't widening to take your stop loss out. That's just the market doing what the market does on that particular instrument. Okay, So you've got to be really, really sensible. And when you understand that, it's going to go a long way to actually you know, really improving your trading you know, from the ground, from the very, very minute you place the trade because that's the most important part where you got your stop loss. If that's not in the right place, you're going to be in big trouble no matter what. But if you're being, you know, a little bit unrealistic about where you're putting it and you and you don't understand the instrument, well, you're going to be in for a very, very long day. So I, I think you're right, Ty. It's all about what type of trader do you want to be as well? Like, you know, we just heard then five pips stop loss on a crazy pound, like coming into, a, coming into the open, that's not going to work out most of the time. So being realistic is a big thing. Yeah. But I think, well, look, you know, we laugh, but everyone... Hey, we used to do it, right? Yeah, 10 years ago, that was up. Yeah. And we'd be on the line chart, we'd be on the line chart, on a tick chart doing that, and five pips, yeah. yeah, stick, yeah. Stochastic cross, five pips, go. Uh, it's disastrous. Take it from people who know it's disastrous. Yeah. That's not the way if you go. if you have a limited amount of time in the day and you're like look, look this is the reality if you want to be a scalper you've got to probably estimated at least put in one to two hours a day correct ty would you say oh, that 100%. Yeah. if you're a day trader i still think you actually need to put in you, you know in some ways i feel like the scalper can get away with less time than the day trader <laughs> in some they ways can, they go short enough. if they go on the smaller yeah. time you probably can. yeah yeah so i think at least i think day trade is very similar now if you want to be lazy and you want to less do less time. It's not, it's not even being lazy. It's being consistent and don't suffer the burnout. The swing trading method, you know, you're talking about 30 minutes to 45 minutes a day. And you know the reality? 
you can do it almost max. any time of the day. That's probably yeah, max. You, can, yeah. you don't even have to, you don't have to specifically finish the closure of the candle, though that's what you're looking at. You could wake up and you could do it at 10 a.m. in the morning in most countries. You could do it at, you know, Ooh. 5 p.m. You could do it really anytime. It is when you get really home from work, flexible. Up, you know, it yep. is, it's, it's awesome. Uh, and it's probably, realistically, people, when they first start out trading, they start scalping. But in reality, mm -hmm. uh, swing trading is actually where you should start. If, if I was to give uh, an absolute newbie trader any advice whatsoever, which is, you know, I've just come into the market, what should I do? Um, mm -hmm. I would be looking at swing trading in the first instance. And I wouldn't be looking at even looking at five-minute charts because you want to be able to actually, you know, start at the bigger time frames and work down. The other way is harder. Okay, you don't want to be going the other way. Swing trading is is really where it's at. Even for people who have actually got the time, you know, most most professional traders, even if they are scalpers, make no mistake, yeah. they'll be swing trading as well, and probably swing yeah. trading at the majority part of their portfolio. So it's very important yeah. to learn, and it's got all the advantages we're going to talk about in just a second. Yeah, it's it. Look, it's it's all of the advantages. We've got a question here um from peter just basically saying in west africa he lives in west africa what's a good time to trade ty do you, could you possibly just get the timeline for that um time zone yeah. i i think africa should be europe shouldn't it i mean i don't see why uh, it wouldn't be. Oh, yeah i'll check it out let me just i think it is but anyway we'll get we'll get back to you there peter because yep. uh well for anyone in the room that that, that trades in africa and, and you trade the times have a look but i'm pretty sure it's going to be on that timeline um so Time. We talk about the top-down approach. Swing traders, you've got to pay attention here. <laughs> um, top-down approach is everything to swing trading. And I, I've gone through and I've used pivots. I've used it, you know every single type of concept that you can think of. And ultimately, understanding from the top down through the charts, even if you're trading a one hour or four hour on swing or an eight hour on swing, you must know what's happening on the weekly. You must know what's happening on the daily at least. Because if you don't, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're making a worse informed decision. So yeah, realistically, top-down approach is one of the things. Now, what does this mean? Well, let's go into the actual charts here, Ty, and uh, talk about, I think probably this one is going to be one of the better ones. Now, you're funny you mentioned pound odd. Pound odd, hey? <laughs> Where am I? I'm sitting on <laughs> pound odd. So there is a reason here, and I want to go out to the weekly and show everyone this reason. So, you know, not the thing with the swing trader is unfortunately sometimes you just got to chill and being waiting and relaxing and being patient while everyone around you is like, I got into 20 trades yesterday. You know, I got into 10 trades today. I'm trading, you know, the AMC, the game stuff, whatever else they might be in. The problem is that it's, it's noise that can really ruin your own psychology and your own mentality. The swing trader, you have to be patient and wait for trend to be initiated. Now, this is one of the ones that we're looking at at the moment, Ty, pound odd. And there is a key reason. Look at this weekly. So we'll zoom this in so everyone can see it. And what do we see here, Ty, straight away? Well, we're seeing a point of resistance. Um, yeah, no question about that. You can see that. Um, there's, lo there's lots of things that we're seeing, but there's resistance. There's a moving average crossover about to happen. We've got consolidation below the resistance. And yeah, as you can see, we've had effectively five attempts. This is a weekly. So we've had effectively seven weeks of attempting to break this level and has not mm -hmm. been able to break it yet. All very, very important information. If you're going to place a trade long or short, right? Exactly. And then especially with swing, we we would prefer ideally to have some kind of you know good trend and participation phase. We know there's key resistance around here. We also know the weekly is unable to break this level. So when we dial it in then to the daily, as Tyron mentioned, there's a coiling or a market structure that's forming at the peak, which is effectively a giant giant range, isn't it? I mean, you've got your support somewhere around here. You've got your resistances. You know it breaks a little bit up a close above. So weekly is probably going to be our number one signal. Because as soon as we go here, we've already seen a little breakout on the, the daily, but we haven't seen the weekly. Now, if that weekly closes above, it begins the participation. It begins the trend that we then want to get involved in the swings. And you don't even have to take the breakout. It's about understanding that you're in an event that all of a sudden is gonna go a certain distance. So let's just go down to the eight hour here, Ty, and, and break this down for a second for everybody. So we've got effectively a bit of a coiling. We know that you know it's trading within this range. Let's just call it around there down to the supports. If this breaks out and it goes long, what's gonna happen based on the weekly? 
it's got a lot of what you call blue sky and I call it green sky because I like to say green green for the profit. Um, but we've got a lot of range above here, don't we? And even if we took the, the yeah. huge range, there, there is a good participation phase that could happen here yeah. quite easily. Absolutely. And that's what you've got to really focus on, right? Like you've got to look at that and say to yourself, well, what's the hurry getting in this? Like, you know, you've got so much scope for big moves up there. Why not take the conservative entry, wait for it to actually break through, continue the trend. You don't need to be the first in the battle. You need to be the last one standing with the flag. And that's what you're looking at here. It's not like you've got a really small take profit to aim for and you you need to get in to actually make it worthwhile. The worthwhile trade here is to see that lightning bolt happen, break through there, watch price accelerate right the way through, and then you're off. And then, yeah, that could provide you with uh, weeks and weeks, maybe months of a solid trend here. This is a very, very yep. serious time frame. We're not talking about a 15 minute chart. Like, yeah, you right. could be trading this one for the next two months, in and out, in and out on every mm. pullback. You've got to understand the prevailing trend and the prevailing key zones that are getting broken. When you're a swing trader, these are very, very important things. Now you're looking at a weekly and you're saying to yourself, Ty and Tom, seriously? Like who, who's going to look at a weekly? Yeah. Everybody looks at a weekly. We look at a weekly every day. Why? Because it's telling us exactly, it's giving us a week's worth of information of buyer and seller dynamic. And it's a really, really important time frame. Look, you could go to a monthly if you really, really wanted to, but for the for the trading that we're doing, long-term investments, you'd be probably looking at monthlies. But realistically, the weekly is telling you all you need to know. I mean, you go to a monthly, that almost looks like an inverse head and shoulders. Um, you know, well, and, well, even and it still proves the exact same point, which is that yeah. this is a key critical zone, and and yeah. you know the monthly even cleans up the fact that the line right. we put in here is actually very solid. And if that inverse head and shoulders happens to play out to its full potential, uh, it's going to go three quarters of the way up that initial move. So you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of pips here. You're not talking about only a small move. So you don't need to be the first in. You just need to be the more sensible approach and basically wait for the confirmation. Wait for it to break. Let everyone else do the mm -hmm. hard work for you and you jump mm -hmm. in. That's what swing trading is about. Swing trading is not trying to scalp um, every move, trying to get it to that resistance. Um, swing trading is really waiting for the well, for effectively what we're talking about, waiting for the swing to happen on the way back once it's broken through. And that's and that's everything that we're doing. So let's have a look now at the euro yen tie because I really want to put this into some practical application that's happened. Now, euro yen is probably a great example of a trend that began and then also a giant trend line that was in action. So we see here the weekly starts breaking out. This is kind of similar to last time. We have a resistance, a support area, we breach it and we find a very, very strong trend. Now, this is the type of thing that a swing based trader will want to get hold of. And they'll they'll also want to start drawing up, you know, key support resistances. And I think this is one that a few people in our community have gotten recently. And I think I think they've traded it, you know, beautifully through. So they've they've found a level that they're interested in from a trend line perspective. Because remember, a swing trader, you want to implement a whole bunch of different concepts. One of the concepts is is you want to start seeing when participation's on and you can get involved in it. The next thing is you want to find, is there a key zone for us to pick up the swings? Now, one of the things that Tyra mentioned before was the lightning bolt. So effectively what a lightning bolt really is, is it's a series of higher peaks and higher troughs. But the most important thing for a swing trader is role reversal. And that is recognizing resistances becoming supports. So over here we have a resistance, it becomes a support, it becomes a support again, we get engulfing candles in specifically that candle is that's a good candle, guys, because what have we seen? We've seen a shooting star or pin bar reversal followed by a monster destroyer candle tie that has effectively eaten that one up, gobbled it up, and it has gone bullish. And at this point, once it closes here, we start to see that momentum in the direction of trend. Now, the important things here is it's going in the direction of our already overall prevailing series of high peaks and high troughs. So we get our resistance, we get our support, we get our candle that breaches through, we get our candle that engulfs over here. And these are some excellent trading opportunities for a swing based trader. And you can find these by implementing role reversal, implementing trend lines, implementing understanding from the top down, the resistance and support breakouts. And you know what? They're higher statistical chances because you're bringing multiple different reasons together. Support resistance, trend lines, moving averages can be really great. We've got the 20 and the 50 exponential moving averages here and the 200, well, not 500, but the 20 and the 50 EMAs. 
and then the 200 simple. These are all great moving averages for a swing-based trader. Now, the reason I bring this up is because what happened at the end here, Ty? First, well, they hit profit, the, which is sweet, but yeah. We hit <laughs> profit, which is sweet, yeah. But then we see the, the big reversal. And look, the trend line was there. We, we've got, we know all that. And um, look, let's turn this into a bit of a lesson. I think it's a really good uh, point. It is, it's so an we've excellent We've got line. the trend line. This is a validated trend line, no question about that. So the trend lines get validated by our rules, uh, and they're the only rules that matter to us, by higher highs okay. and higher lows, because it makes sense. Yep. Well, it's true, right? Yeah, you know, we can draw a trend line anywhere, but it doesn't mean it's real. Um, we want one that's being validated. And to validate a trend line, you need to see markets make higher highs and higher lows. The lows need to be being touched on the trend line, like we are here, but they're always getting higher. Now, we had very fair warning that this was not going to continue. And if we were looking at that last uh, touch of the trend line, the big dirty red candle that went through it, you know, we had no intention of ever trying to think that that trend line was going to be support anymore because it made a lower high. As simple as that. When we, when we saw the, the very last peak when it actually hit profit, when it came down, failed to actually get all the way down to the trend line, but then failed to make a new high, that was our signal that this trend line was in very serious danger. Is it technically broken? No. Is it still validated? Yes. Would we be taking it as support in the future? Uh, highly, highly unlikely, unless we saw price really hang there and then start to reverse again. That was not a good place to go. But, you know, the good place to really take this was the retest of that zone. If we put a horizontal line there, you're going to see that's a roll reversal from the previous before the trend line had even broken. Uh, it comes back, touches the trend line from the bottom, off we go, and, um, you know, off to the race as we go. That is a, a that's trading 101, that's swing trading 101. Roll mm -hmm. reversal and support and resistance are probably your best friends when you're swing trading. Like, roll reversal and, and yeah, you know, support and resistance are probably two of the most important things after price action anyway. So yeah, they're, they're probably the two of the most important elements that you're going to use regardless. But when you are swing trading, you're looking for those lightning bolts and really, really good entry points to join the trend. Swing trading is effectively joining, good swing trading is joining existing trends. And probably just as importantly, identifying uh, trends that were good, but are now weakening. To give you one, an opportunity not to get involved in a trend that's weakening in the uh, trend's direction, but probably just as importantly to get involved on the pullback when it does happen and to actually reverse that trend. But again, we are always waiting for that confirmation and that comes from role reversal zones. So it's it's about putting together quite a lot of information. We've got some questions coming in here, Ty. When would you enter these positions? Well, I think if you, if you had identified this trend line, okay, over here, and you were looking at these candles, the way to enter this one would be see it, hit this level, and you would actually have to wait for this candle here, at least on this. Now, you might have seen a lightning bolt on the smaller time frames, 15 minute. Remember, you can start dialing it in. This is just us on a higher time frame here, but you can start dialing it in. You're looking for a slight movement off that. Tyrone mentioned series of lower highs. That is the key, guys. It's so important to see that. I'll give you another example with gold of lower highs, actually. Let's just quickly go over here for a second. Um, so this was another one where we actually had a great trend line tie. We'll go to the eight hour. And we had a great level of swing. Now, let's talk this one through quickly for swing traders. Big double bottom, big levels of purchasing. We have actually a trend line that goes through the whole thing. And then what happens actually here is we see a series of lower highs coming in through this area. So they, they're not making higher highs, it's making lower highs. And when it did this, it's signaling to us that we're not no longer going two steps forward, one step back, or we're going up with higher peaks and higher troughs. We're starting to see the weakness come to the market. Let the price action tell you what's going on. Lower highs is not good when you're in an uptrend. Consolidation coiling, like this one's doing here, that's okay. But a series of lower highs, usually there'll be more than one or two, won't they, Ty? There'll be like, what, three, yeah. four? Yeah, usually yeah. three or four, I think. Yeah. You'll see them, yeah, but generally, once you've got two, you, you know you've got to start watching it. And I know, look, a, a lot of people, yeah, one of the biggest knocks on technical analysis is like, oh, yeah, it's all good in hindsight and it's easy to say mm -hmm. it after the fact. But you know what? When you're actually understanding what the market, what to look for when the market is actually doing these things, you you only have to go back a couple of weeks in the videos. Watch our videos. See if we weren't talking about the exact same thing we are about gold, why that trend line was in danger before it actually broke the trend line. Why? Because we understand price action and what it's doing. So you've really got to understand the signs. As a swing trader, you're not going to get as many opportunities as a scalper. Okay, like a scalping trader is going to get a lot of trades in 
um, a lot more than a swing trader, let's say that. So when you are trading as a swing trader, you need to identify good opportunities and good opportunities aren't going to come in the way of not identifying when a trend is about to end or there's a high likelihood that the trend is going to end. You need to put the um, odds in your favor every single time when you are swing trading and that's understanding the market. So just be aware of that. It's, it happens a lot more than you probably think. The lower highs will happen more than likely. It's not. It's very rare that you'll reach a very key point of resistance and it just sells off without having a bit of a go to try and actually protect it. So keep out. Keep an eye out for those lower highs and also higher lows on the downtrend, of course. It's, it works exactly the same in the opposite direction. Let's use some top-down analysis here as well on gold just recently, Ty. So we have some clear things. Firstly, we have rejection style candles what are these candles telling us about the market there's bears there's nasty bears they are pressing it down they definitely don't want to allow gold to get past the 1795 which is you know very much just underneath that 1800 then they all of a sudden it. yeah they're, they're drop, yeah they're drop bears <laughs> jumping out of the trees and um and when we go back up here and we start breaching like we did yesterday what this is telling us is that we can start dialing in on the timeframes. And what do we know? Well, we've got a one touch, two touch, three touches, quite a strong little bit of trend coming here with nice higher lows, nice price action. And we can start to break this down even further. We can go into something like a one hour. And Tyron, what happened today on the one hour? Well, you can see that it's bounced off that level. It's come back and, and tested. Look at that big rejection candle at the important zones. It's come off the 50 and started to make a series of higher highs and higher lows. Now, you know, that, that's a pretty good place to, you know, be looking for your entry point. This is the great thing about dialing down. And you say, well, you know, why are we looking at the daily? Well, this is why we were looking at the daily, because we know that this area is a very, very strong area. Now, here it is. We've seen our little mini, I mean, you could call it a little mini bottom. But the most important thing about this is it's actually at a roll reversal zone. Okay. Once it's broken through that level, up we come comes down, retests it, and off she goes again. So, I mean, the next point, you say, well, where, where do you get in on this trade? Well, you wouldn't want to be jumping in yet right now because you've actually missed the initial uh, impulsive move, which would have got you out of trouble in the first place. Now what you're waiting for is a break of that high. And you've got to look at the bigger picture again. Like, where's the bigger picture for, for gold? If it breaks that level, the bigger picture's all the way up, uh, a long, long way up from where it is now. So there is no hurry. What we want to see is that new candle broken, break those MAs, and there you go. Like, look at the range that you've got to actually get in, involved in this trade by taking out so much risk by waiting for it to break to a new high. You, you're just eliminating so much risk by taking away the obstacles or letting the obstacles get dominated before you actually join that trade. Uh, I've got a question coming in here from Alex, Ty, and there are some other questions that we'll ask uh, answer throughout the, the webinar today. So it's important to, uh, is it important to see the MAs uh, to go in the same trend before entering the trade, e.g. all MAs at different timeframes go in the same direction? Well, you're never going to say, if, like, obviously, if you're on a daily and everything's crossing to the upside, generally speaking, the, the, the lower timeframes will also be agreeing with you at that point, will have already crossed. Yep. What the key is with swing is you probably want to at least see, I would say, look, ideally four hours is one of the best time frames. So a 2050 cross in the four hour as it breaches through like this, this is this is usually hand in hand. So you'll get a, after a consolidation down here, which is what happened after that big crash, you'll usually have two moving averages such as the 2050 exponential crossing at nearly identical period as the price action breaks through a key resistance. That's what happened here. And if you go through most of your big patterns, most of your big accumulation or, or distribution levels um, throughout time, you will notice this, these two going side by side, won't you, Ty? Yeah, most definitely. And, and it's important to understand their relationship. I think when you understand the relationship between the two, you can apply mm -hmm. them in a, a, yeah, I guess a more effective way. Understanding only one, not really understanding the other, is not really going to you know, play to their strengths. Understanding the overall picture. Look, we talk about this, un like understanding all of the elements of trading is important, but you, do, you really need to know which ones actually work together for the market that you're trading. I think that's probably the most important thing. Um, is it, Stochastic's going to help a, a swing trader? Not likely. Uh, is MACD going to help a swing trader or MA is going to help a, tr a swing trader? Absolutely. So they're the things that you need to understand. You want, you want to know which indicators are going to help you the most. Because you need, yep. well, when you're swing trading, you need to know the market that you're trading. You need to know what it's doing in terms of trending sideways, whatever, and, and all the time frames. When you understand that, it's going to give you a big advantage when you're trying to select the right trades. No question. 
Uh, some great questions coming in here. And these are all questions that people should be answering. Do we follow the dollar index when you're trading uh, gold? Yeah, you definitely should look at the dollar index and see what it's doing. Now, there's some strange things going on in the dollar index right now. I mean, obviously, this is going to be a pivotal week. We have the FOMC uh, meeting minutes, uh, I think 2 p.m. New York time on the Wednesday session. So that's coming up. And that's going to be a big thing for the dollar index and for gold. Is that a risk? Yeah. And if you don't want to take that risk into the, something like that, which is totally valid, um, someone's asked here, would you do it? It's up to you whether you can handle it and whether you have the adequate stop losses and the adequate psychology to, to be able to handle that kind of thing. If you get stopped out by news, is that going to lead to revenge trading? Is that going to mean that you've taken too much risk into it? These are all things you must consider. And that's really on what you're doing. Generally speaking, I think really solid stop loss levels will hold a lot of news. Now, FMC yeah. meeting minutes, not the best bit of news. <laughs> At the no. moment, it needs a lot, but yeah. Yeah. Ty, your it's, thing, a tough, your thoughts? It is, it's a tough one. Look, what you've got to do, I always apply the can I sleep rule. Uh, and this is what I, I, I tell all of our students and everybody who asks. Um, can you sleep while your trade is on and not worry about it? If that's if your answer is yes, then you can handle that risk. If it's no, absolutely not. Do not place that trade. I think it's it's really as simple as that. Understanding yeah. your own risk parameters. Look, everybody is different in that regard. Okay, so you're not going to have the right answer for every single person because everybody's risk tolerance is is different because everybody's situation mm -hmm. is different, of course. But you need to be able to sleep at night and you need to be able to not worry about a trade because, as we all know, if you interfere in a trade. Uh, prematurely because you're worried about the impact it's going to have on your account, then you're trading way too heavily. Okay, and and when you start getting into bad habits by taking trades early because you think they're going to, you know, potentially go wrong on you because they're too big, uh, you're going to blow your um, strategy up. You might have a very very good strategy, and you're not going to be able to fulfill it properly because you're you're getting um, involved in the trade. You want to keep emotions out the door, and that emotion starts at risk management. Okay, really really important. So Ty, we had a question about US dollar index, whether we we start there. We certainly do in Forex. It's a big thing you want to be doing. And this week is pivotal, as I said before, because we've got the weekly 50 exponential moving average being put under pressure. Now we know it's rejected this once, it's failed to breach it once. And then as we're lighting into the end of this week, we may see after this FOMC whether this US dollar index decides to continue its bull trend. And if it does, what is that going to do to I imagine if it breaches this and closes above? Is that going to be a big deal for coming weeks for the dollar index? Oh, golly gosh. I think um if, if it does that, it's gonna have such an impact. I know the question was, do we I think mm. do we check the dollar index for gold? Yeah. I check the dollar index before <laughs> I have breakfast. Uh, because it it has such an impact on, on basically <laughs> everything, uh everything that you trade, the, the Euro USD, all of the majors, uh the S P five hundred. Basically it, it has an impact on everything. It's does it absolutely determine where they're going to go no it doesn't but what it will do is it will give you a very very strong bias and i think that's the important part you need to know mm -hmm. where the dollar strength is and i think that's probably it's look it's one of the biggest ones to check not many people trade it ironically you know like a lot of people look at the dollar index and say yeah. um wow I, I think it's really bullish and i think it's really bearish but not many people actually trade it. i mean i don't uh because what you're going mm -hmm. to trade is the pairs around it i mean if you want to trade mm -hmm. the dollar index all you got to do is actually do the reverse on the euro and you're going to get a very, very similar result. The spreads are a hell of a lot more friendly and um, it's an easier trade. But the dollar index gives you the information that you need. I think that's the important part there. So we, we've got across here, Ty, a, a you know US dollar yen. We talked about like you go and look at something like the US dollar right now and then you come in and you see this US dollar yen. Well, we, I mean, you've been pretty big bull on this for quite a while. It's been some really great trades. I mean, you want to talk about when swing trading came into this thing and you you got some ferocious fireworks when this mm. downward trend line got breached above. We talked about this. If you can go back and look at the Pepperstone uh, videos from when was this? I think it was the start of the year, February and January period, that this began a serious bullish movement here for the US dollar yeah. yen. And therefore, by understanding, again, the top down, and I know it may seem simple, but we want to get it through today, is that this is where your swing trading starts. What happens if you wake up in the morning and you check the dollar index like Tyron does before eating your eggs and bacon or whatever you're eating your cereal, and, and you know you know that I am biased towards the long side for valid reasons because the price yeah. action is teaching me that on the weekly. I can just look for buys the whole way yeah. around here. Now, if I'm only looking, looking for buys, Ty, 
Yeah, you go to the small time frame. Do we I lose very much? much? Yep. We don't lose that much when you when you're going in the direction of the trend because well, the trend. Now? Mass. I mean, how can, how can oh, you? Yeah, if you're stop loss the you can right lose at the five pips, stop loss of the pound. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> realistically, and, and that's the whole point, right? Like when you identify a, a good trend, and this this actually really highlights the point that I was making earlier. Like we we look at that break of the trend line, and you might be really really keen on getting involved in that and saying, "Oh my God, it's broken. Let's go." You didn't need mm. to get involved for four or five candles there. Why? Because where it was going was probably to the previous high. Look how far it's travelled, and. Now, on this chart, you might not look at it. There's a weekly chart. You're not going to see a lot of entries. Mm. Go to the daily, go to the four hour and go to the 15 minute. You know, you, you could have done mm. a year's worth of trades on this thing in the last two months. And mm -hmm. so that's what we're saying. When you identify that it's actually going in the right direction for you, you're going to get many, many opportunities. I, I saw a question earlier saying, I always, I think it was, um, I always miss the entries. How do I avoid that? Yeah, sorry, that was Joy. I often miss the entries. Joy, when you swing trade, um, even if you miss the initial entry, uh, generally it's going to go longer than um, you probably anticipate. So you go to the smaller time frames and start jumping in on the smaller time frames. So take pullbacks, little roll reversal swings that we saw earlier. It happens on every single time frame. Okay, it's not just the the identifier time frame, which is what we're looking at, say on a daily or a weekly. You go to the four yep. hour. You know you've got a bias. You know where you're heading on the bigger time frame. That's why you always do multi time frame analysis. And you just mm -hmm. jump in on the pullbacks on the smaller time frames. And no matter what day time of day you're trading, you are going to get opportunities because these generally go longer than you think. There's a, uh, uh, a classic yeah. case recently of the odd US dollar tie breaches the zone. You think, oh, I missed out. I missed out. I yeah. missed out. Often the market comes back. And don't worry, yeah. it does this for a reason. Number one, it wants to punish all the FOMO people that get in yep. here, the greedy, greedy, greedy bears, the drop bears are in here for sure. Drop bears. And then it gives you the role reversal. So the swing trader, it's unfortunately patience. And yep. yeah, but that's patience, sucks. But, but here's the thing though, right? <laughs> like we true. said, you only have to trade yeah, 40, 40 to 45 minutes a day is enough. So you, yep. you can afford to be patient. You're not sitting there waiting for trades to set up. You're actually putting alerts on. So when they're there, Joy, this is the exact example that we're talking about. If you've missed that initial entry, don't worry, don't despair. Generally, you're going to get a pullback to this uh, magnitude. This is a daily chart, right? So you would have to have been away from the charts for a whole week to have missed that. Okay, so and that's and that's the point. If you do an analysis every day, even every couple of days for an hour or so, there is no way that you could have missed that if you were looking for what we're telling you to look for, which is the role reversal after a, a break of weakness. So really, really important. Hopefully that answers your question okay. And the question is as well, Ty, when we use this top-down approach and we're looking at this kind of market, you know, you need to recognize that market sucks for a swing trader. It just oh, does. Sure. Like, I mean, that is that is the yeah. worst swing trading yeah. market. If you're not scalping and day trading that kind of concept, then you're probably going to be getting eaten alive. Uh, the moving yeah. averages are, of course, like slithering around and you're not seeing them, you know, move apart. When you've got moving averages like this, in essence, really what that's telling you is the trend is on and you can see it. You can see the two. Look at this. The resistance, the body close is the key as well. Um, if possible, if you ever see wicks and then you see a body close come down to them or like this is a perfect role reversal. You had resistance over oh. here. You got resistance, resistance, support. Yeah. I that is a, all the way up, though, Tom. Amazing. All the way up. Oh, you I can know. Do it I know. All the way up. Like yeah, just, I know. Yeah, all the way. <laughs> and and that's, that's what I think. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, we, we we look like we're probably we're not picking and choosing our charts here. We could do we could put you, you give us yeah. a pair. We'll show you how this works. Um, this is just the most recent uh, price action that we're seeing. But when you're patient and you're looking for these things, they're going to mm. uh, although they appear very obvious in hindsight, they happen mm. in real time a lot, all the time. Mm. In fact. You just need to know the signs, okay? So just when you understand the signs, you know what you're looking for, and that's when you, you hit the trigger. And swing trading gives you that opportunity because you don't have to be in front of the charts 20 hours a day. Absolutely not. Here's a great example again, Euro recently, Ty, and it's not, you know, I'm not saying every single time you're in shorts here thinking, oh, yes, I, I got all this. Maybe you missed this initial run. Okay, it happens. You sometimes, you know, the markets are so fast right now, you can't kick yourself for missing this, yeah. this incredible run. But you know what? You get a resistance, you get basically a shooting star, you get a shooting star, you get a rejection again here. That's a triple rejection oh, on yeah. the daily. If you the see daily. a triple rejection on the daily, yeah. and then you can even you can bring it in a little bit more. You know the trend's down currently. 100%. All you gotta do yeah. is just set a little thing that says, you know, alert, the market has moved underneath the last low of these rejections. I want to short it. 
And, you know, you can just take this yeah. little slither here, this short down to here, and you can walk away with a big smiley face on you, you know, face because you've done an incredible done right, job done right, being a patient have. person. Yep. Yeah. And a question from Cody. Well, what we'll do, we'll go to a couple of questions now. Cody yeah, uh, asks, uh, can you be a scalper, day trader, and swing trader at the same time? Absolutely, you can, Cody. Um, but the important thing is to understand the differences between the three. Um, mm -hmm. and making sure that you're trading appropriately for every trade that you're, you're placing. So if you're placing a swing trade, don't put a stop loss uh, or a take profit that is you know, relevant to a scalping trade, because if you do that, you're going to get mixed up and you're going to be putting the wrong um, take profits and stop losses on the, wrong, on the wrong trades and you're going to get all confused. Can you do it? Absolutely. It comes down to your time frame. It comes down to you know how much time you want to spend in front of the charts. And But realistically, absolutely you can. But my advice to a, to a beginner is not to try all three at once. Pick your poison, get good at that, and then start introducing the different elements. I would, you know, if you ask me from the start, what what should I start with? Swing trading is where I would want to start for, for a beginner. Yeah. If, if we could go back in time, we would go swing trading straight away. I know we wouldn't go on yep. scalp, even though we did. <laughs> yeah. And that's just because it was stressful, guys. It's stressful, stressful, especially when you're not highly you don't have the thousand yeah. hours in the charts yet you don't really yeah. understand each one of those candles yeah and you got to be precise too i mean you got to be fairly sharp you, like you, be need, to know, you, hmm. you need to know what you're doing uh, alex mm -hmm. has asked a question uh, what is an ideal risk and reward ratio for a swing trade in it look in our opinion alex probably three or four to one is ideal we love three or four to one swing trades they're great two to one is acceptable uh but you wouldn't want to be going under two to one for a swing trade um yeah two to one to four to one is the sweet spot, but of course, the bigger the better. But realistically, if you're going for more than four to one, then you're probably not really swinging at that point. Okay, you're probably going and you're probably one. also not necessarily reading the signs in front of you. Remember, the idea of going to a weekly and a daily and stuff is to see, hey, you know, have we got something coming up? You know, I bet you a lot of a lot of euro traders here don't realize that there was some support over here. If you're just looking at maybe the eight hour, four hour chart tie. Now, yeah. where is it most likely if this Euro continues to tank here and the US dollar goes up, where's it most likely to go? Of course, into the next support. So you need to be aware. Now, what is that starting to look like on a really huge time frame tie? It's looking like a massive double top here. And then of course, if we see that further weakness, the next level is here. It makes yep. sense. It's the weekly these, and then you all you're doing is just to be like, yeah, taking advantage of that. So that's that's what that's the power of the top down and and doing this. Uh, we have some other questions coming in here, Ty, uh, just about like where can you get? Uh, someone asked a question about education. Look, we do have it over at fxevolution.com. Um, of course, that is us. If you're interested, you can check us out. Uh, we have a couple of courses there. And uh, you're welcome to come and check them out. In fact, we've consolidated them all into a super course recently, which is awesome. Um, some other questions. I mean, have you got any others here that you like? Uh, there's so many questions coming in, which is awesome. Well, thank you so much for your question. Here, we just got to yeah. go through the ones that are, um, people are asking uh, double of. What, uh, I have a day job and I am at home at 7 p.m. in Melbourne. What would you recommend? Um, hmm. Well, look, 7 p.m. in Melbourne is, you know, a good time to trade because you've got the London um, and the European markets open and, you know, fully ready to go. By then, they've already been open for a couple of hours, really. So quite often, you know, the, the market open, which is about 5 p.m. at the moment, um, our time, is a little bit aggressive. And, and sometimes that's where you get your fake outs. I like jumping in maybe a couple of hours later. And this is why we like to do our webinars a little bit later on as well, because we get the market setting a little bit. If there's any false breakouts, we've kind of already seen them. And then they start to trend a little bit. So, you know, that's what you're looking for. Not a bad time to trade. I know a lot of people work full time in Melbourne. Melbourne mm -hmm. is a good place. Now, that question earlier about the South African time as well, they're about eight hours behind us. Okay. So, uh, effectively, you know, it's what nearly 9 p.m. here, it's 8 45 or something p.m. So, you're talking about, you know, 12 45 p.m. Not a, if you're a if you're a trader during the day, it's probably a, a great place to trade. <laughs> like you're trading um, your afternoon in Africa and you're trading London, um, the later London session. I think it's probably a great time. And early evening in South Africa is New York open. So definitely not a disadvantage if that was your if that was your question. Probably a really good time. And Western Australia is actually the same because they're that three hour difference from Melbourne. Melbourne's probably not the toughest gig actually in um, the Asia Pacific region. 
Yeah, I would say it's probably not the toughest, um, especially if you're working. The, we've got a question here for Joy saying that there's trends sometimes are so aggressive nowadays that you can't even see a pullback in them and you can't therefore swing trade them correctly. Look, you can take the breakout for it. We're just talking about the pullback, the conservative entry. You can also take the breakout. And what a lot of people do is they scale into it. So they might take like a half order or half risk on their breakout strategy or maybe a third. And then they will scale into that order. Remember, that's what really the banks are doing. The banks scale into positions as they like what they see. They're not just going $1 billion into the market. They scale little bits, little snippets come in over time. Uh, another thing is sometimes a market will move so quickly, you miss out on the opportunity. Don't feel the FOMO. I felt the FOMO. Tyrone's felt the FOMO in the we greed. Felt FOMO. Yep. We felt it. We don't want that to be something that you worry about. So realistically, it's all about thinking, hey, there's another opportunity just around the corner. And guess what there is? Yep. Look how many, look at all this stuff that Pepperstone offers to trade. Look at it all. There's so much of it. Now, you may not like all those markets. Some will be specific to you, but there is plenty of opportunity and there's a new day tomorrow and this is your hard-earned money. So you've got to you've got to put it to work most effectively. I think one of the biggest things that you need to remember when you are swing trading, first and foremost, think quality, 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 mm -hmm. quality on your trade. Okay, um, mm -hmm. that, that's probably one of the most important things you need to remember because swing trading is not like uh, a scalp where you might get ten opportunities in a day. You might have to wait a week to get another opportunity to get a bad one back. So don't get bad ones. Wait for the quality. You know, apply the you know, apply the thing. What would Thomas and Ty do? Would they approve of this trade? Um, you know, think about this webinar. Would the trade that you're looking at for a swing meet the criteria that we've talked about? Is there support and yeah. resistance? Is there a break? Yeah, have we looked at the bigger time frames? If it meets all that, then you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't be taking it. Don't ever feel bad that a trade doesn't work out. They're not always going to work out. There's no guarantee that taking a quality trade is going to work out, but you're no. putting the odds in your favor, and that's what's important. There's nothing wrong with taking a trade that doesn't work out. There's a lot wrong with taking a trade that doesn't work out that shouldn't have been placed in the first place. Uh, I'm going to answer this one last one. Uh, also, Ty, there's a bit.ly link in there. If anyone wants to get some free cheat sheets uh, that we offer, these are cheat sheet A4s that you can print, have on your desk, have on your computer just to bring up. It has great patterns that we use. It has candlesticks and, of course, uh, MACD as well and divergence there. Uh, this is a question that comes in from Kobe. Uh, where can we get uh, the video of this webinar? Well, you can get it on Pepperstone's YouTube channel. Go over to YouTube, type in Pepperstone. It will be there. And I believe you also get a follow-up email with hopefully the recording for it. And then do we use trailing stop losses? Very careful on that one, Michael. The best way to trail is to use price action or a key moving average, which is market adaptive. What you don't want to do ever is just have 50 pips trailing stop loss on my swing no. trades. Big mistake. Yeah. Well, we've done it. <laughs> so I can tell you, it ain't working when I uh, put it over a 10 yeah. years, Ty, how much did it get slaughtered? It wasn't good. Oh, yeah. No, 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 you don't want to be doing that. No, definitely not. Yeah. Um, so for thank you so much for joining us tonight. We've had yeah. um, it's been a really good session. We've had a million questions. Sorry we couldn't get to all of them. But uh, we've got our live market analysis session starting in about eight minutes. Uh, so anybody who would like to join that, um, do you have a link for that one, Thomas? You might pop that in the window. That's free yeah, to attend. Pop it in there. Yeah, we, we do market analysis for um, all of the major pairs and take a few questions as well. But uh, just as importantly, there's a, a very important survey at the end of this webinar that uh, mm. Pepperstone and us would like you to fill out because it really gives us a lot of good feedback on what we can do to make these webinars better for you. Um, I, we want to make it obviously as most uh, yeah, useful as possible in the future. So we run them every couple of weeks. I'm sure you're all aware. So please take a couple of minutes to fill out that survey. It really helps us out with the content and yeah, bringing the things that you really want us to bring to you um, first and foremost when we're actually planning these webinar sessions. So it would be very appreciated by Pepperstone and us. Absolutely, Ty. So thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Uh, if you're watching on the, the YouTubes, remember to smash that like button if you do enjoy it. And we look forward to seeing you, I believe, in around two weeks' time or just in a few minutes over on our YouTube channel. Catch you soon. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone.